It's been a while, but uh, I think it's time we should do a little update on the aftermarket PS5 accessories. These are all from Wish.com, and boy, did they take a long time to get here. <laughs> yeah, I ordered these like two months ago, and they were all stuck in New Jersey, and I didn't even realize that like <laughs> nearly everything was spread across three different shipments with one item in here and then a bunch in the other ones. But let's start off with uh, some things that at this point, I don't remember what it was, but I think it's better if I not check and now be a little bit surprised at what I had picked out, you know, again, two months ago. So first up is we've got these uh, interesting little Wicked Grips is what they're called, and I don't uh, I don't remember if that's what it was called when it was on the uh, the actual listing, but Wish is uh, always a really fascinating, weird website because, you know, you would think this is cheap, but I think everything here, like, it's just weird. The shipping alone for individual items, it, it always comes out not affordable at all, so uh, you know, I'm not sure if these are really considered cheap PS5 accessories, but... If you've seen the previous videos we've done on this, they often aren't very good. <laughs> yeah, so another thing that I inadvertently didn't seem to realize is that a lot of these uh, accessories all came from the same company. Uh, but I guess we could also just boil that down to the same manufacturer because as most would know, these are all pretty generic uh, products, so it's not like they're really bes uh, bespoke uh, PS5 accessories that are made by a really established company. Oftentimes they're from Alibaba or something and you can throw a logo on them and just start your own little company if you want to. Or if you're willing to <clears throat> at least buy some of these things in bulk, right? So, uh, at least for what I'm <laughs> trying to get at here is that I must have bought like five or six of these things all from the same private label company because uh, I think their boxes and their designs are all very similar across uh, across this stuff. So these are cooling fans for PS5 and I don't know why they're in separate packages. Maybe they're two different ones. Uh, easy installation. So there's, yeah, I, I guess they're, they're different, right? This one's uh, I don't know, we'll find out when I open them. I don't know, they look similar. Oh, that was the back. Yeah, I don't know why I have two of these. I certainly don't recall ordering two. Oh, no. <laughs> the, these are like... Oh, this is not cool, because the I, when I got these delivered, uh, also they've been sitting for a bit. Not a long time, obviously, but... Uh, yeah, I think I got these delivered like maybe a week uh, a week ago, and just based on uploads and whatnot, this video was not scheduled to be uh, put up right away, essentially, so I didn't have to open these. Um, and this is like, <laughs> you can see how malleable the box is. It's very moist, and, uh, oh, lord, okay. Yeah, that's, <laughs> these, these didn't travel well, um, and I guess the big hold up here this is a controller grip, and this is a charging dock, so we should also maybe talk about what these actually are. So, yeah, they're not looking too good, but these were stuck in a, uh, a port in New Jersey. So this is a horizontal stand. Now, this might actually be kind of useful. I think it looks just, well, silly, but uh, it's well known that the PS5 stand is a bit finicky. Uh, if you're doing horizontal, which is partly why you'd want to use this, uh, if you're doing vertical, it can screw in from the bottom, and that actually is essential to make sure the console isn't so top-heavy and it doesn't uh, fall over. Horizontal, though, it's very loose, and so if you even just barely try and go back there to, like, change cables or, uh, cables or something, the console usually, like, tips off that stand, so that might actually be useful. Uh, this is a disgusting multifunctional cooling stand. There's so many of these. These are really popular and they're always like these high margin products where they cost like $30, $40. And this also, I just think, <laughs> kind of looks silly. But um, this box is, all this is just 
totally ruined. The boxes, at least. Let's see if this one fared any better. I'm trying to figure out what this is. Because I thought I told myself it wasn't... Oh, it's a... I think it's this is another uh, center strip. Yeah. So you would put this uh, on the glossy black portion of the PS5. I think this is supposed to be sort of like a... Well, it looks like a solid color, but I thought I picked something that was a little bit more pearlescent. Moving on to this one here. We've got... Ah, this is a... Um, like a, uh, a dust cover for PS5. So if you're concerned about dust, you're going to be putting that on your console. When you're not using it, obviously, you wouldn't want to play it with that on there. And then next up, we have... Ah, now this kind of takes me back to the... Um, if you remember the Xbox 360 keypad, you put this on the bottom of the controller and it's, e it's an easier way to type messages and whatnot. Um, Sony also actually did something like this officially for the PlayStation 3 where the DualShock 3 is, uh, well that controller is not really conducive to having something plugged in from the bottom so it was on the top instead and that was like super silly. Uh, but in theory this one should be uh, good for the bottom of the DualSense and we'll see how usable or reliable that is. I think the one I tried on a DualShock 4, the big problem there was that because it connects via Bluetooth, you're always kind of connecting and disconnecting from it and defeats the purpose of how convenient it, convenient it is to type on it. Melissa is now being trapped in all this fun packaging on the floor. Now this is insane. <laughs> so we've looked at a lot of, um, you know, aftermarket uh, PS5 covers and now Sony's finally offering an official one uh, or a few official ones. But you could put a full-blown giant condom on your plates if you choose to do so. I have no idea why you'd want to, but I had to take a look at these floopy, floppy, just stupid things. <laughs> if I'm if I'm gonna be like brutally honest, as uh, YouTube uh, YouTube reviewers would say, brutal honesty. This is dumb. But I'm also. So excited to put these on and see how how it looks. A dust proof kit for PS5. And you can see what they were going for on this. Which is like a uh, kind of a clear. It's like you wouldn't know it's there unless you like really look for it. But it's supposed to, well... I guess impede airflow. <laughs> airflow. I'm not sure how how much how much of this is in the way of PS5's uh, vents and what should be the intake and exhaust. But uh, and there's also little silicon covers that you can put into the um, USB-C and USB-A slots to you know prevent dust from getting in there, which is uh, that is somewhat useful. But yeah, uh, this one I thought we'd take a look at as well. Uh, so. That should be everything. <laughs> what do you think? Do we do good? I really don't think so. <laughs> because that's normally the problem with these videos is, uh, you know, it often comes off as like, you know, checking out all these cool accessories, but they're not, they're not cool. Like, <laughs> I'm often making fun of these things, right? So um, right now, Sony's really increasing the stock of PS5, so I know a lot of folks are finally getting their hands on the console, bringing it home. They're very excited, and they're also thinking about uh, some accessories for the console, which uh, this is the kind of stuff you're going to find on Amazon, Wish, uh, eBay on a daily basis, and you might want to avoid most of them, but we'll try and see if there's anything in here that might be considered uh, really worth it. First, let's take a look at these controller grips for the DualSense. I thought these looked interesting because I've never seen ones where they're not one whole piece. It's two separate ones, so at least in theory they aren't completely getting in the way of the buttons on the controller. 
because my problem with these things has always been they're oftentimes so thick that they get in the way of actually pressing down buttons. And while that's still a problem here, the analog sticks, touchpad, PlayStation button, and mute button are all open, but the face buttons in L2 and R2 are right against the grips. Also, these come with a few extra analog stick caps, and for some reason these ones were an absolute pain to get on, which is sort of good since they won't come off as easy, but eventually the little one did knock off, so... Yeah, still not for me personally, but if you like these grips, then I can't imagine why you wouldn't just want a full one that covers the entire DualSense over these, assuming you buy these things for actually protecting the controller from sweat or damage. The horizontal stand. First thing to know here is that this piece of foam you see me take out, you need that if you have a PS5 digital edition. You would simply leave that in place and then fit these onto your console, but I'm using a desk one here so I'm going to take it out. Now, as expected, these are a snug fit right off the bat. They make a solid connection to the PS5's covers, but technically these do come with a screw that you'll notice on the bottom, and this would go where the stock screw goes if you were using the PS5's standard stand for a vertical orientation, so I wouldn't say you have to use it, but it is there if you want. Anyway, you can see this has rubber feet that holds the covers in place, and then there's more rubber feet on the bottom. So by and large, this will genuinely hold your PS5 in a much tighter position than the stock stand would. I just think it looks, eh, not good. At the very least, the stock stand does give the impression that the console is floating, and these are not going to do that at all, so the trade-off is up to you, but these do work as intended. I've seen a lot of different cooling fans for PS5 so far, and this one is like most where it plugs into the back of the console with a USB pass-through, which is about the nicest thing we can say so far. I would hope most people know this by now, but these are usually bad and are actively impeding on the console's airflow, rather than actually improving it and keeping temps down. And thankfully, I can say this one does indeed blow air outward, because some of these fans are actually pushing air into where it's meant to exhaust, so this one does have the right direction, but despite that, there's still a lot of plastic blocking the airflow's path. Your PS5 just does not need this, and you don't either. Plus, the console is already super quiet as is. Is this what you really want? Okay, on to the charging stand. Now, I've actually seen a lot of people end up buying these since they do come in much cheaper. Even when ordering off Wish, this thing was like $10, so I get the appeal, but oh my lanta, do not buy these things. Especially this design where the controllers slot in from the top. I mean, for one, you have to be precise when plugging in your controllers, and that's not going to happen every time, so you're going to inevitably scuff up and damage the plastic around the USB-C port, and then two, this is so cheaply built and lightweight that you always have to hold down the stand before pulling the controller off. You can see while I was filming this B-roll, the very first time I do this, it breaks off! Now, look, I get it, the DualSense condoms make them heavier, but let's be real. If this didn't happen, it was going to at some point, so I understand this is cheaper, but just go with the official dock from Sony. It is far and away worth the $30 if you're looking for the best charging stand out there. Moving on to the vinyl strip for the PS5's glossy black center plastic. Looking back at the original listing, I thought this was going to come out a bit more metallic or reflective looking at least, so just be mindful of where you buy these from and the accuracy of the colors. And the only real issue here is that this was split into two pieces, meaning there is going to be a noticeable seam, which admittedly did not stand out nearly as much as I thought it would, and really there's not much else to say. These are fairly easy to install, and I totally get the appeal, they come out looking pretty good, they protect the glossy black trim, and they're easy to remove if you want to try something different down the road. If you remember, I bought a dust cover for the PS4 Pro a while back, and basically laughed at it because it just seems so silly, and uh, that's kind of the same thing here. Clearly, one would not be using this while the console is on, but I suppose it is reasonable to think you'd simply use this when you're not using your PS5 to prevent dust from settling over time normally. My only thing is, it just seems a bit high maintenance, always taking this on and off when in reality you could just wipe the console down every so often, but hey, you do you. The Wicked Grips I did not realize were something a bit more involved. Basically, these have instructions on how to properly affix them because they come flat and you have to align seams to stick these on correctly. 
and so it's similar to installing vinyl, you just have to be careful and go slow. Which before even doing this, make sure you clean the controller thoroughly, because there is some give on being able to readjust these, but the more you do that, and if the controller isn't clean, then these aren't going to stick on nicely. Anyway, these were a pain. You can see my first attempt wasn't that good, but after doing the other side and then trying to fix the first, it came out better. And straight up, these do feel pretty good. They're a little thick, but not like the other silicone covers. They have a lot of cushy give, and more importantly, they don't go anywhere near the buttons. The only problem is after one day, they started to peel off. So either I didn't clean the controller well enough, or I tried to fix my work too often by removing and readjusting. Moving on to the plastic dust covers. This is a whole kit basically with the transparent ones for the PS5's vents and the caps for your ports. They give you an entire set which I would figured I'd try on my PS5 and yep they work. Not sure how often you would use ones like power or HDMI but hey they work and the other ones would indeed make sense if you're simply not using USB ports or something and you care that much about keeping your console completely clean but the other very obvious bad part about this is the transparent vent covers because it is intended that these should be used at all times while your PS5 is on. And no, do not do that. <laughs> these are restricting the airflow of your console. These are undeniably bad, and they make no sense at all. They do snap on nicely, I can say that much, but understand you would make your PS5 work harder with these on. Ah, the rubber covers. So these are pretty straightforward to put on, except that right away you'll notice this cut on the bottom. That's for the PS5 stock stand, so if it wasn't clear, these are intended for a vertical orientation. And outside of that, these are just giant heat insulators that you absolutely should not use. I mean, I'm sure one could argue that these make a minimal impact on your PS5, and maybe they're not that bad, but it's a matter of why. Why bother with this? If you want, just buy new console covers. I'm really just astounded at the things some companies will make in order to appeal to a naive audience, and this falls firmly in that category. But if you're curious, those dust covers do barely fit, so if you're looking to do a PS5 overheat any percent run, I'm sure these will get you there faster. The Bluetooth keypad. So this one is kind of interesting because it's not like it isn't useful, it's just too little too late for a device like this. First off, it's expectedly cheap, but it does have a simple on-off switch, headphone pass-through, and USB-C for charging. Setup is pretty easy, it shows up right away under accessory and Bluetooth settings, and it connected without issue. What threw me off is it does have a speaker, so you can output all PS5 audio on this thing if you want. But what we're really here for is the typing, and it works that much we were hoping for, and I'll be the first to admit I was always terrible at typing on these, so I was trying to do it without looking to see how my messages were turning out, and yeah. Again, too little too late. You just don't need this in a world where there's voice to text on PS5 right from the dual sense out of the box. If you're sending messages on PS5, that's the quick way to do it. Unless you really like texting on these, or you just need to be quiet, this is another pass. Okay, the giant, unruly, multifunctional stand. You can see this thing is big, and there's a lot of stuff going on. You can charge controllers, store games, your headset, blow air into the bottom of your PS5 where there's basically nowhere for the air to go, things like that. For the charging, the stand uses these little battery terminals that you plug into your controllers, so it is a bit easier to just drop them in to begin charging. And setting everything else up, the PS5 fits in even with these rubbery console covers, so if anything, this would be loose without them. And the games, it holds 15 total, but the little slots that hold them together are so close that the games barely fit, so you have to really push them in to where it feels like it's forced, which I'm not a fan of. And then there's a spot for your headset and the media remote. Up front, you can manually turn the fan on, which is best left off, and some additional USB ports that are a bit finicky. And then here's the final product. It's disgusting. In actuality, there's nothing bad or even insidious going on here, it just seems like a really poor way to do all these things in one spot where it takes up far too much space. I'll pretty much always recommend against these all-in-one stand kits, there's better ways to do all these things that this is trying to do. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you haven't just yet, 
please consider subscribing for the best PlayStation news, reviews, and updates that are here on YouTube. You can also follow me on Twitter, at Mystic Ryan, and that is it. I will see you all in my next video. You take it easy.